Welcome to Talking Movies. Uh, just Cakes and Luke today. Um, we didn't like Blake and Swank anymore, so we kicked them out. Just for the day. Or as I'm referring to them now as Blank. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Luke obviously wasn't here last time we did it, and he's seen about 3,700 movies in the last three weeks. So we'll probably talk, just talk again briefly, like we, not briefly, but probably longer than we should, about movies that we've seen recently. So, um... Uh, why don't you give us one start, and, I'll, and then I'll go. What do, you, what do you got for us? Okay. Well, yeah, I haven't seen anybody since the holidays. So, uh, uh, I would say that the first one, um, just trying to go in chronological, I saw This Is 40, uh, Judd Apatow's new comedy. Um, it does run a little long, maybe because I'm not quite 40, I don't understand <laughs> it yet. But, um, I appreciate it. It's different. It's just a nice movie about a family, a uh, guy and two daughters, just trying to make life work, and the tr ups and downs of marriage, you know, just feeling, I want to say stuck, but getting stagnant and getting older, and, um, but no, it's nice. I appreciate it. It's, they're different, and they're thoughtful, um, but I mean, yeah, it does run a little bit long, or I guess kind of say how many times can you see that people argue about something. Um, but like any Apatow movie, just turned a little bit, be better, but, mm -hmm. but I still respect them. So, um, depends if you like Apatow movies, if you do see it, not, you maybe pass on it. But I think if you're maybe someone that has two kids and is married and close to 40. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would recommend it. I hear a lot of people at work, uh, parents, you know, talk about that movie to mm -hmm. each other. So maybe it's striking a different chord with other people. So. Yeah, you know, the more I hear about it, the more I think I'll probably like and understand it. Obviously, um, the lady eye candy, Paul Rudd, will kind of keep my <laughs> wife interested. We talked a little bit about that last time. But, um, you know, some t you know, and it is, it is this long, and I kind of made the... Made, like to make the point that you know sometimes things do go on too long when you're you're married and have kids because you're both so busy and sometimes you're going your separate ways for work and whatnot and sometimes issues don't always get addressed and you know then that comes out in an argument so to speak and just because it's 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 filed somewhere back in your head and it doesn't get out doesn't come out till maybe the wrong time and then that leads to a different discussion. <laughs> I'm talking too long, like that movie's too long, and I guess that's kind of my point, but anyway. Well, I think it kind of gets that, you know, just the, the ins and outs, just yeah. the day-to-day. -day. Yeah, and I can certainly appreciate that. Is that something necessarily that we want to see on screen and that we're comfortable watching over and over again? Probably not, but is, is it true to life? It probably is. So, um, but anyway, moving on. I watched um, an awful movie called Salvation Boulevard. Uh, got my boy Ed Harris in it. Not the total reason I watched it, but of course, Ed Harris and, I forgot her name, Be Ed Harris being in it is great, and then Marissa Tomei, sorry, Marissa Tomei's in it too, just for a little bit. She's really, oh, she's, she's really weird. It's called Salvation Boulevard. Hmm. It stars Greg Kinnear and um, Pierce Brosnan, kind, oh, of a, okay. kind, of a, nice. kind of a nice ensemble cast, okay. but not a very good movie. Um, it kind of had some... Good qualities. I thought it was going to be kind of Christopher Guest like, you know, mockumentary style about religion and uh, televangelists and stuff. And it just kind of went on too long and it was just really very strange. And I, I watched the whole thing. I don't know why. I guess as somebody, I was saying right before we started, somebody who almost always looks at the time of a movie before we start it, um, sometimes. I, ironically, sometimes if I get so far in a movie, I feel like I have to finish it because I've already invested an hour and a half, and once I get beyond there, I kind of lose, I lose focus anyway. But I, sometimes I just feel like, oh, you know, this is so terrible. How is it going to get better, or is it going to get worse? And sometimes you're just stuck watching the end yeah. of it, and because you're <laughs> under the covers and you don't want to get up and find the remote, it's out of reach or whatever. So I end up watching the whole thing. So I did watch the whole thing, but. Not very good. I, I expected a lot more. You know, there were some good twists in it, too, but I just, I wouldn't recommend it, unfortunately. It's one of those movies where you think, oh my gosh, all these cool people are in it, and yeah, it just kind of flops. Yeah. Know? Um, kind of reminded, flop, 
flopped like uh, that City of the Sea movie. I remember grabbing that thinking, Robert De Niro, oh, Francis yeah. McDormand, how how awesome. And it's seriously, to this tired. day, probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But anyway, uh, what else have you seen recently? Um, I just watched, uh, I think it'll be a new holiday cult classic called Rare Exports. It's from Finland. Um, I'm sure Blake has talked about it. Uh, it's about, um, it's kind of explained, but there is this evil Santa Claus, the real Santa Claus. He's right, a demon. Like a Christmas slash horror movie. Yeah, and... Uh, he is slowly being awakened from his icy tomb and his <laughs> evil elves. Um, but it's uh, really, really dark, but kind of funny. But it's really funny, but not like too over the top. Uh, it's definitely in the vein of like Shaun of the Dead or Gremlins. Um, and then also on the Blu ray, they have uh, a great, uh, another weird holiday movie called uh, Santa Claus Con Conquers the Martians. Uh, and that's on a Mystery Science Theater 3000 hmm. to one of the best. Um, it's about Martians going down to Earth to kidnap Santa Claus to bring joy to the Martian children. Um, it's just ch cheese ball all the way through. It looks like a music video because <laughs> um, it's just it's so cheesy looking and goofy. And um, But Rare Exports, uh, I recommend. Um, it's not for everybody. I didn't like, totally love it, but... It was definitely original and uh, is, is it a is it a foreign film? Yeah, it's okay. a foreign okay. film, but there's some English in it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's actually really well shot. But um, if you like uh, good uh, horror cult movies, I recommend that one. Uh, it's a good horror comedy. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then another one, a kind of a horror cult movie. I don't know if you call it horror anymore. It's called Killer Joe uh, with Matthew McConaughey. Um, and Gina Gershon, um, both who do really great in it. Um, pretty intense. Don't want to give too much away, but it's intense towards the end. I don't like her. But uh, just this kind of uh, white trash family, Southern Gothic, pulp, pulp classic kind of, pulp fiction kind of movie. It's uh, just kind of dirty and kind of funny, but not for everybody, though. Not for sure, everybody. yeah. I've heard McConaughey is really good in it. Oh, yeah, yeah he's really great. He's great. Cool. Um, um, another mo new movie I saw, at least new to me, um, this is a movie that I, pick I picked up because it's working at a movie store. It, it always surprised me that it sold so well because it seemed like your own ordinary run-of-the-mill romantic comedy, but it's called Something Borrowed. Um, it's got uh, John Krasinski, Kate Hudson, Jennifer Goodwin... I forget the the lead guy's name. Um, he's he's it hasn't been in a whole lot of things. But anyway, it's, it's called Something Borrowed. It's based on a, a book. Um, it's kind of a, a good you know it was it was good. It had its really good moments, then it had its really bad and kind of awkward moments. It's kind of as somebody who watches romantic comedies with their wife, it's 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 it, you know it's what well, certainly one of those that raised some, raised some good questions and and whatnot. You know it's you know. It, there's a lot of cheating involved and whatnot, and it, it had certainly, like I said, it certainly had its good moments, but it was just kind of weirdly just kind of came to a head and then fizzled and then became really predictable. It was just, it was kind of odd. Interesting movie. I still don't know why it <laughs> continues to sell really well, but anyway. Probably because it's a romantic comedy. And yeah, yeah. And that, it's based on a book, and I'm sure a lot of people have read that book. I know the, the book... Emily Giffen is the author. I know that her books are very, oh, yeah. very, very well received. She's written a lot. I think it's that book in particular is part of it, a different series. But uh, something borrowed is the cheating. Spoiler alert. Uh, did Django Unchained go? Um, or Django. Excuse me. I'll save that the for last because I have uh, some okay. thoughts. But sorry, sorry to put you on the spot. No, it's all right. Um, but that'll be like the last one. I just have two more. Um, I just saw Les Mis um, last week, um, kind of one I've been anticipating. Uh, like the musical, I've seen it on stage a few times, but like the stage, uh, the movie does, I know it's something we always talk about how long movies are, but when the third act does come in, you're kind of like, oh, a new set of characters and everything. Um, you know, it's a classic novel, so there's spans a lot of time, and there's a lot of characters that coming in and out of it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. Um, the way they film the uh, singing is I never seen it in a musical before. Uh, really handheld, really uh, really t um, tight on their face and everything. Um, not like Dancer in the Dark, um, but um, they re they sang all their songs live, which is nothing new. But uh, it's the emotion, like people would cry a lot during. Their song, um, Anne Hathaway's, like, I Dream a Dream, I've Dreamed a Dream, I believe it's the song. Uh, you always hear it really, really pretty, like Susan Boyle or Barbara Streisand or something, but it's uh, very much more emotional. Uh, it's not the greatest movie, it has its Did flaws. they do all their singing in that? Everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they did it all live on the stage, too. And, I mean, you can kind of tell, like, Russell Crowe kind of has a... Not the greatest voice, but I give him credit for trying. Um, Hugh Jackman's great. He was a rock star. Yes. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere in Down Under. <laughs> and then another uh, Aussie, uh, Hugh Jackman is really great in it. Uh, kind of a role he's been born to play. Um, he's a handsome man. I was sick of that. The old globes the other day. He's a handsome, <laughs> handsome man. Especially with facial hair. He's something about him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he goes through the extremes, too. Like, he lost a lot of weight for the role, and he looked and he looked like he kind of gained a lot. Um, but no, it, it's... I would only recommend it if you like musicals. Uh, but it's uh, it's definitely... Um, it's flawed, but I still enjoyed most of it. Um, it, does, it, it, it is it does have some really great, great scenes in it. It does kind of seem to me like it's going to be one of those musicals that people that don't like musicals are going to see just because of its, mm -hmm. its notoriety so far and all yeah. the people in it. But, I mean, people got to know it's an opera. Yeah. It's all in song. Uh, very little dialogue. So, just got to, you got to be prepared for that. But, uh, Helen Bottom Carter and Sasha Baron Cohen rejoin uh, from doing Sweeney Todd. They play the innkeepers. He's very grotesque. <laughs> kind of the comic, uh, the comic element of the whole movie. Kind of just pinballing around, always scheming or doing something, so... They're fun to watch, so um, it does look nice and nice and dirty. I mean, yeah, it has a very I'm interesting gritty to see quality. if it gets any any makeup or yeah. set design. Oh yeah, it's, visually it's pretty great. Um, it's really raw, but really kind of stylized, but not over stylized. But yeah, I mean, it gets pretty nasty. Like when there's people get shot, there's blood, and there's a scene where they go through the sewers, and it looks like sewage, you know. So, so maybe grandma might be. Taking a little bit. I've seen that. I've seen a couple PBS productions of some Dickens books, and that this I mean I know it's not a Dickens book, but that's kind of when I see the trailers. That's kind of what it looks like to me. It's got to have that nice. I mean, yeah, it's that. It's that it, yeah, it's not pleasy, but it certainly gets the point across. Yeah, so. it's that mid eighteen eighteen hundreds. You know, Paris, France, urban. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> a lot of social change. So. But, um, yeah, I recommend it if you like it. I mean, there's some really great songs. Um, but um, it is long <laughs> and does get tiresome a little bit. So. Um, once again, uh, just totally shift gears here. Uh, Mindy Project was new again last night. Uh, second new one since the holiday season. The other one, I th the one last week I thought was kind of eh. This, this new one was awesome once again. She has done such a great job at that show. Super happy for her. She's she's a hard hard worker, just a funny lady. She's probably one of the best up and up and coming funny ladies out there. So I'm very happy for her, and that show is awesome. Uh, new Modern Family last week. There's another new one tonight. That one, the New Modern Family last week, was awesome. That show continues to be awesome. I'm always always very impressed by that. Um, the New Office was pretty good. Yeah, I didn't have much chance to watch any TV this week. 30, or, so. 30 Rock's just been kind of weird, and I think there's only like two or three left. Yeah, it's in the end, yeah. They've taken an interesting turn <laughs> with that show. But anyway, you know, it, it is what it is. I I still love uh, Jenna in that show. She's yeah. probably one of my favorite characters on TV. Just her yeah, that match that con conceitedness episode. and just selfishness is just awesome. Um, I mean, that's... <laughs> That's the new stuff that I've been watching, too, I guess. I think Parks and Rec is probably new this week, too, so yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. And community starting up again, if you're if you're a fan of that, if you can handle that off the wallness, that's it's a pretty good show as well. Um, other new movies you've seen? 
Um, well, uh, I'm finally going to bring it up, because I want to kind of talk about some things in it. But uh, Django Unchained, uh, Tarantino's uh, latest opus, came out. Uh, I liked it, I didn't love it, but um, it always takes me a few times to watch his movies to kind of really appreciate it. Um, but, uh... I like and hate that about him. Yeah. I mean, he does get wordy and maybe a little self-indulgent, but, uh... I could tell that he was kind of missing, um, his former editor, passed yeah. away, Sally Meikle. Uh, and you kind of tell they definitely had a collaboration together. Mm -hmm. Just, the editing movie was still good, there were some really great scenes and everything, but, um, just didn't have that same snap, um, as that. And, uh, there's a lot of great directors that have a good... Uh, editor, like Martin Scorsese and Thelma Schumacher, yeah. and dozens of others. <laughs> and um, What did you think of Leo being, and Leo, Leo, being the all bad, bad boy? He was great. Yeah, yeah he was great. I could kind of tell he was devilishly having fun, but he was a pretty rotten person. Yeah. Um, and I, that's what I kind of want to bring up. Um, I don't think I ever heard the N-word so much in a movie. <laughs> and I've seen Malcolm X. That's, yeah, that's that's certainly getting some um, some controversy. But I think uh, that's what I kind of liked about it too, because it was kind of throwing the awfulness of our of our past in our face, and it was tasteless. But yet again, it was kind of like almost um, cathartic in a way. Yeah, because it was kind of like you could laugh at it, or you can, or you get. Um, I mean, there's a great scene where uh, Jamie Fox is whipping. Whipping a, um, a person that worked on the plantation, some white man who was about to whip a lady, and there was there was something like you're cheering, you know, yeah. you're 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 happy, and then there's like this whole goofy Mel Brooks esque scene with uh, um, people that want to be the Klan, kinda, um, even though twenty years that's twenty years earlier than when it happened in real life, but uh, and it's funny. And you laugh at it, and there is, and some of them get shot and stuff, and you kind of are happy about it. Uh, but, um, I don't know, I thought it was a way for us to kind of, like, uh, we always seem to shy away from, like, the really ugly stuff, and I think if we look at it, you know, yeah. straight head on, I think we can get over it a little easier. I mean, not to say that Jingyu Unchained is the roots or anything. Well, like yeah, I mean. And it is a, just an adventure story, too. Yeah, That's, it's. It's just a spaghetti western, and it's fun and good it's performances. Just a movie, people. Yeah. yeah, you can you can be offended by the N word, but you can also think, "Oh my gosh, as a as a nation, look how far we've come since." Then. Yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, and I know there's no like historical backing to this story, <laughs> but it's it's a story set in a time, and let's face it, people said that word in that time. People said that word a lot. It was mm -hmm. derogatory. It was meant meant to be so, and yeah. it, it's the word has certainly evolved through the years to become something else and something that is not necessarily tolerated in today's society, but it's, I mean, they, they're they using dialect from the time that they're... Oh, yeah, I mean... The movie uh, was supposedly made. I, and people say different, just open up a... I haven't seen the movie, but I'm Open just, a Mark Twain novel. Just saying, know. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I do not say that word at mm -hmm. all, but uh, I thought, what I also thought was interesting was uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, I think he plays probably the most interesting characters I've seen. Um... When I first, you first see him on screen, like, you're just, like, mortified, because it's almost so offensive how he, how he is and stuff. Um, if you ever seen the show Boondocks, there's this guy named, uh, Uncle Ruckus, and, uh, I believe that's his name, and it just is kind of like his version of that character, but black in slave times, and it's, um, just, he just plays, like, just the most typical, like, Uncle Ben, uh, substitute um, sub subversive uh, person. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but then you realize he's playing a whole different game, and he's uh, a lot more um, methodical and uh, mean-spirited and kind of selfish in his own way. Um, I mean, we've seen characters like this in other movies, too, but uh, yeah, he kind of really just kind of comes out of nowhere, too. And he's truly the, probably the most evil person out of there. And there's some evil people. I mean, Leo's pretty awful in it. But but yet again, it's a Tarantino movie, so you're going to be laughing and on the edge of your seat and having a good time, too. So, I mean, there's some heavy issues with it, but I think it's kind of wrapped up in a fun 
um, action adventure uh, story. So, uh, so yeah, if you like over the top violence and <laughs> and uh, nice good seventies music and horse riding and a little bit of a twisted view of American history, I, I recommend it. <laughs> so Tarantino is kind of one of those filmmakers who does usually. Could put a good soundtrack to a movie. I'm not sure if he's the one doing it, but obviously he's the one signing off on it. And I can always appreciate that, even if it's you know not from the time period. Oh yeah, the movie's supposed to be set in. He does, he does a good job picking music to tell a story. Yeah, there's this. I mean, there's some a couple scenes where they're riding around on horses, and there's some like gangster uh, rap going on. Yeah, I mean he's. And then there's this really great John Legend song he uses, and he's really. I mean, he's revived songs like Stuck in the Middle and. Yeah. That put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> I mean, he, he's made those songs, you know, part of the, part of a newer generation. Which you know, if a movie can do that, it's obviously you're obviously remembering it for a reason. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say. Um, cool. I'm sure there's a few other movies I've seen that I just kind of slipped my mind. I apologize if I. That's but I uh, yeah, I recommend pretty much any of them. Um, I'll do a little recap. Um, this is 40, I'd kind of give a B, B minus, um, and then I'd give uh, Rare Exports a B plus, um, Killer Joe a B plus, and then um, Les Mis I'd give a B, um, and then I'd give Django Unchained a B minus, a B plus, A minus, somewhere in there. Um, they're all good movies, I mean, I didn't love them, but um, they're really good, I recommend most of them, uh, depending on your taste, so. I'm gonna give Salvation Boulevard a D plus. <laughs> it passed, but uh, so I guess I feel like that kind of thing might be <laughs> worth watching. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, something Borrowed. I'm gonna give a C plus. Um, you know, if you like a romantic comedy, it's good. It's certainly gonna open up discussion. Um, it's maybe not something to watch with your single friends. Uh, just a fair warning there. Mm-hmm. That, that's it. I guess this has been Talking Movies. Thank you for. For checking us out, we really appreciate it. Uh, remember to watch our friends at Sodak Humpcast. Uh, they're crazy. But anyway, thank you for joining us. Have a good day.